what is it specifically that you would say about the Nike shoes? And you're saying neoteric, that's just a fancy word for new, right? So yeah. mm-hmm. so what what is it about those shoes that that makes them so good for runners? Yeah, so the the design of the shoe is interesting. The construction of the the shoes is aimed at improving energy return in the midsole and increasing stiffness along the longitudinal axis of the shoe. Um, and this is accomplished through a really lightweight, resilient foam. Um, the foam that Nike uses is called PBAX. Um, and they also use some air cushioning as well. Um, and that helps with energy return within the shoe. There's been some lab studies that have been done on these neoteric Nikes that have shown that the energy return per step is actually twice what you get from traditional you know, popular marathon shoes. Um, and so returning twice that amount of energy is a, a really uh, significant benefit to runners that are looking to improve their endurance performance. Interestingly, there's a lot of debate between scientists and bloggers on what actually is the mechanism behind that improved performance, whether it's, you know, that really lightweight, resilient foam, or whether it's that the design of that curved carbon fiber plate that you see within the midsole. And there was actually a really interesting study recently that actually took the Vaporfly and compared an intact Vaporfly to a Vaporfly where they actually cut through the, the shoe, cut through the carbon fiber plate to see if that would kind of change change uh, things. And they really did not find any significant differences in terms of improvements between the shoe that was cut and the shoe that was intact. And so what that really speaks to is that it's not just the foam, it's not just the carbon fiber plate, it's really the interaction between those two pieces and the overall geometry of the shoe that helps to facilitate those uh, improvements in running economy and then to performance as well. Okay. Okay. Because Nike does make shoes like, you know, the Pegasus that has the foam, but it doesn't have the plate. So you would expect that shoe not to be as fast as, as the combination. Is that what you mean? Correct. Yep. You know, I, it, it's hard to separate the the foam from the um, carbon plate because a lot of people think, okay, well, the foam is giving me a little more bounce. Like you said, it's giving me the energy return. But I've talked to um, some biomechanics uh, experts who have said that it really kind of depends on your cadence, whether the foam mm-hmm. is going to be as beneficial. It has something to do with how it squishes and how it bounces back. Do, can you talk about that at all? Yeah, so I have heard some of that as well, where um, I've heard, you know, from people that own the shoes, full disclosure, I do not have a pair because I can't find one in my size. Um, (laughs) But people that I've talked to that wear the shoes do sometimes say that it doesn't seem like you get much of a benefit until you actually get up to speed. Um, And so that may actually speak a little bit to, you know, how different running speeds and even different running styles may impact that, that performance benefit. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see kind of the direction of shoe design and and footwear biomechanics in the next few years in the sense that I can see where we would eventually get to the point where you would bring people into a motion capture lab and look at the the kinematics and kinetics of their running and the pressure patterns of their feet on the treadmill and everything else. And then they will actually have shoes designed and fitted specifically to their biomechanics to help to optimize those improvements in run econ- running economy and performance. Oh, that would be cool. So they would match a foam that bounces the same as your foot strike. Is that what you mean? 